Hi, welcome back. I'm scientist Kate. This is grade three, weather and climate. Lesson 3.2, discovering climate through data. For this lesson, you will need investigation notebook, page 41, and something to write with. Go ahead and pause the video, grab page 41, and meet me back here. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, welcome back. Do you remember what we did last time? We read a story about durian fruit, which is what orangutans eat, ripening and falling off of a tree, and we took the data from the story to make a graph. Do you remember what that kind of graph is called? Yeah, it's called a bar graph. Bar graphs are used by scientists all the time. They're used to organize data so that we can compare it and make sense of it. The scientists at the Wildlife Protection Organization sent us this entire year of data from Creek Island so we could decide if it's the best place for the orangutan reserve. But I was totally overwhelmed by all of those line plots. So we've decided that we're gonna use bar graphs instead. We also learned in the last lesson that bar graphs may just show an average temperature for one month, like the way this bar graph shows 79 degrees for May. But that doesn't mean that every single day in May was 79 degrees. There were lots of different temperatures over a range in the month of May in this bar graph, but the number 79 was kind of in the middle. So we need to remember that bar graphs often use average numbers to represent a month. Okay, so we're trying to pick the best island for our orangutan reserve. By using a lot of data, we can predict many years into the future. And that's what we need to do for our orangutan reserve. We don't wanna pick a place that has nice weather on one day or one month or just one year. We need a place that the orangutans can live forever. So we need to study many years of data to make the best prediction. We're gonna practice making predictions about weather over time by using three different cities. Are you ready? Take a look at this city. This city is called Anchorage and it's in Alaska. Do you know anything about Alaska? If you do, great. If you've never heard of Alaska before and you don't really know anything about the weather there, take a look at this picture. Does it look like a warm place or a cool place? Great ideas. I think it looks like a cool place because those mountains are covered in snow and I know that snow is pretty cold. All right, let's take a look at some weather data for a year in Anchorage. But before we do, I wanna remind you about all the different parts of a bar graph. So remember that bar graphs have a title at the top and then they have stuff across the bottom. That's called the X axis. And as you can see, there's going to be months across the bottom for a whole year, January to December. Then up the, up the side going up and down, that's the Y axis. And this is gonna be showing us temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Look at the scale of this graph. Look how it's jumping, zero, 10, 20, 30, 40. So what are we counting by? Yeah, we're counting by tens. So we need to remember that when we're reading our graph. Okay, here we go. The temperatures begin low right here in January. Now trace the shape of the bars with your finger as I do it with my mouse on the screen, ready? Ooh. So the temperatures begin low, they go up and then they go back down again over the course of the year. Did you notice that pattern? Awesome. Okay, let's check out another city. This city is called Queensland and it's in a place called New Zealand, which is really far away on the other side of the world. Take a look at Queensland, New Zealand, and think about what the climate might be like there. Do you think it looks warm or do you think it looks cool? I think it looks kind of cool. I see that there's snow on the top of the mountains, and I'm also observing that there are some evergreen trees. I know 
just from living in Seattle, that evergreen trees usually grow in places that have cooler climates. So I'm making the prediction that Queensland is going to have a cool temperature. Okay, let's check out the data. Hmm. Are you ready to trace the bars with your finger? All right, follow along while I use my mouse. Ready? Ooh. You like my sound effects there? <laughs> Did you notice the pattern? Let's do it again. Ready? Ooh. Hmm. What do you notice about the way the bars are shaped on this bar graph? Go ahead and tell me. Yeah, it's so interesting that these bars don't go up like a hill the way Anchorage did. Instead, they dipped down like a hole. That's an interesting observation. All right, let's check out the third city. The third city is St. Petersburg, Russia. Take a look at St. Petersburg and think about what you think the weather might be like in this place. What do you think? To me, this place looks kind of in the middle. It doesn't look especially cold, but it doesn't look especially hot either. So my prediction is that it's somewhere in the middle. Okay, let's take a look at the data. Before we take a look at the data, I want you to grab page 41 in your notebook. Okay, so if you don't have it right now, I want you to pause the video and go grab it. Now, let's review the directions. I'm gonna show you the weather data for St. Petersburg, Russia. And here's what you're going to do on page 41. You're going to look at the location and the year of the bar graph, and you're going to fill in the location right here and the year right here. Then you're going to answer questions A, B, and C. Question A says, what month or months had the highest temperature? Question B says, what month or months had the lowest temperature? And question C says, how did the temperature change from January to December? Hint, trace your finger across the graph. All right, so I'm gonna show you the data. You can pause the video and then we'll meet back together to discuss it, ready? Okay, go ahead and fill out page 41 based on this graph. I'll wait for you. Okay, welcome back. We just explored one year of temperature change and compared locations. Now we're gonna look at additional years of data to see if we can find a pattern. Okay, so do you remember Anchorage, Alaska that had the big mountains covered in snow? For Anchorage, we have six graphs, 1960, 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, and 2010. That means we have weather data for Anchorage that spans 50 years. Wow, that is a lot of weather data. We're really going to be able to find a pattern. Okay, so looking for patterns over many years. I'm going to show you the six cards for the six different years I just named. You're going to trace the shape of the bar graph with your finger. We're going to figure out if the shape of the bars follows the same pattern every year or if it's random and there's not a pattern among the years. Are you ready? Great. Remember, this is for Anchorage, Alaska. All right, so here is the temperature data for the six different years. Let's trace each one with our with your finger while I go over it with the mouse. Ready? So we're going to start up here in 1960. You have your finger ready? Are you pointing at the screen? I'm looking at you. You better have that finger ready to point. All right, we're going to trace the tops of the bars. Are you ready? Let's go. 1960. Ooh. 1970. Ready? Ooh. 1980. Ooh. Ooh. 1990. Ooh. 2000. Ooh. 2010. Ooh. Sound like a whale, making my little whale calls. <laughs> All right, so did you notice a pattern in the temperature data over those 50 years? Tell me what the pattern was that you noticed. Great ideas. 
Was the data exactly the same every year? Tell me what you think. I'll go back and let you look. Hmm. Thanks for sharing your answers. When we notice that a pattern repeats itself over time in a place, we say that that is the climate. And the climate is the typical weather in a place over a long time. So let me help you figure this out. Weather is what is happening in a place on one day. Climate is like the pattern of weather that we can expect over a long time. So here's an example. Check this example out right here. If you lived in a desert, you would expect the weather to be really dry, right? Like the climate of a desert is very, very dry. But that doesn't mean it never rains. You might have a day of weather where it's rainy because weather talks about the conditions in a place on like one day. But the climate of the place would be over a long time, we would expect to see a lot of dry weather. And so that's the typical weather. Okay, so looking at the pattern we discovered, would we be able to make predictions about the temperature in the future? Can we use data from the past to help us make predictions about the future? What do you think? All right, what would you predict the temperature will be like in Anchorage in January, five years in the future? Okay, so let's say that I've booked a vacation and I've booked a vacation to go to Anchorage, Alaska in January in five years. I know that's crazy ahead of time planning, but you know, I'm a very, very organized and planning person. So I've planned this trip and I want to know what the temperature is gonna be like five years into the future and what kind of clothes I should pack. So let's look at this data from Anchorage. A good way to figure out how to make a prediction about weather in the future is by finding the range of temperatures. Do you remember how to find the range? What two numbers do we need to find to find the range? The lowest number and the highest number. So I'm gonna give you a minute. I want you to look at these six graphs and look at the month of January only. Find the graph that has the lowest temperature for January of all the graphs. Are you ready? Go ahead. Did you find it? What month was, or what year was it? Look in the title. Yeah, in 1970, in January, the average temperature was nine degrees Fahrenheit. Y'all, nine degrees is really, really cold. Really cold. Like 32 degrees, remember, is where ice freezes. We're at nine degrees. We're way below the temperature of freezing. Okay. Now to, find, to finish finding the range, we have to find the highest number. Look at the graphs and find the year where January's average daily temperature was the highest. Go ahead. Did you find it? It's in the year 1960. The temperature, the average temperature, was 19 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we have our range, nine degrees to 19 degrees. So what would you predict the temperature will be like in January, five years in the future? What do you think? The temperature will be somewhere in the range of nine to 19 degrees in Fahrenheit in January. Woo, that is really cold. Well, sounds like I better. Pack my parka, huh? It's gonna be really cold on my trip to Anchorage. So as you can see, I've got my heavy coat, I've got my hat, I've even got my little glovies. So I am ready for nine to 19 degrees. Now, remember, we're ultimately trying to figure out where to put our orangutan reserve. And I think that studying many years of weather data is gonna help us find the best island to put our reserve. So that's it for lesson 3.2, discovering climate through data. I'm scientist Kate, and until I see you next time, be safe and stay curious.